My name is Lajna McMillan and I'm a new media artist and I'm going to be teaching you all um, an intro to 3D modeling today. Um, but before we start, um, I just wanted to um, shout out and just say that for the fall term, the Columbia Global Centers, as part of the university initiative to support international students and students who are living outside of the United States, has made it possible for students in 65 cities around the world to access high-end study spaces to convene, connect, and to be supported as part of the Columbia community. In addition to these spaces, the Columbia Global Centers is, develop, is developing programs and events such as this week's series of computer workshops. Oops. So yeah, so this workshop um, provides an introduction to 3D content creation and topics include navigating Maya's user, inter user interface, modeling geometry using polygons and nerves tools and creating and applying textures and materials. So um, also if you have any questions, um, you can um, ask them throughout the workshop using the Q&A um, option um, at the bottom of the screen and we'll get back to you um, as we're working. So all of you should have already um, installed Maya um, onto your machines, but um, has everybody been able to um, do that? If not, let me just take you to um, that space right now really quickly, and I can sort of like take you through how to um, sort of navigate that. So I'm gonna exit out of here and I'm gonna type in Maya 3D. So yeah, so we're using Autodesk Maya for this. And basically you can either like download the free trial, but um, I also sent you all the link to um, getting an educational software. So educational, yeah, student and educational software. And basically, this will this should provide you um, access to getting Maya onto your laptops if you haven't already um, for free. So just like log in um, with your EDU email account and um, search for Maya, and then you should be able to install it. Um, and if you have any questions about that, just let me know um, using the Q and A. Um, but I'm just gonna like get started with this um, presentation. And yeah, basically just like really quick about myself. Um, I've been making a lot of art like within the 3D space now for five years. Um, and yeah, I do a lot of mixtures between like performance art, um, 3D modeling and um, animation. Yes, there is a difference between um, Maya and Autodesk Fusion. Um, basically, let me go back to this um, to this uh, screen here. Maya is uh, like this is Autodesk, uh, the Autodesk uh, software site, and essentially Maya is one of the softwares that Autodesk provides um, within this like products um, tab. So basically, uh, no thanks. Um, basically, these are all different all all different um, programs. And what we want to um, make sure that we're installing on our, on our um, computers is Maya. So this would be the one that we want to do. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and you can just like go to download the free, um, the free trial if, um, if that's easy. Um, but yeah, so just make sure that we're using Maya. So um, back to the presentation. Um, yeah, so what is 3D modeling? Uh, oops. Uh, 
Uh, 3D modeling is the creation of three-dimensional objects um, inside of a simulated software. The object can be created, sorry, let me just try to move my screen here. Oop, there we go. The object can, cre can be created from simple shapes all the way up to complex high polygon models. A polygon is one triangle and it takes up many triangles um, or squares we'll see um, to make a circle or complex object. And some of the industries where 3D is heavily used is in film and TV to create CGI characters, objects and environments and animations, um, video game development um, to create um, visual 3D components of a game, um, architecture. Um, yeah, there are a lot of people creating um, different models like within um, different softwares of like houses and bridges um, and also in engineering. So yeah, and these are some of the tools that you can use to create 3D content. So there's Maya, there's 3ds Max, there's Blender. Um, if you're looking for um, something free um, to use um, without your EDU address, um, Blender is a really great um, resource for that. Um, there's Tinkercad. Tinkercad is an online tool. Um, it's very, very, um, it's, a, it's a very, very beginner um, 3D, um, 3D creation tool. So if you're looking for something quick and easy to use, Tinkercad is great for that. Um, there's SolidWorks and there's Rhino. Um, and that's more on like the engineering um, architecture side. But so, but for today, we're going to be using Maya. So yeah, so just like diving a little bit more into like what a polygon is. Um, basically, they um, are uh, straight sided shapes with either um, three or more sides um, defined by three dimensional points, vertices and straight lines that connect them, edges. Um, and this is also just like in math too, um, polygons in math uh, sort of uh, relates also to polygons within 3D spaces. So yeah. We have um, vertices, edges, and faces, and um, you'll see today, like when we dive into Maya, that we're going to be using those vertices, those edges, and those um, faces to basically manipulate an object. So, uh, yeah, and then we're also going to be um, looking at NURBS geometry, and um, that stands for non-uniform rational beast lines, and they're a geometry type that you can use to create 3D curves and surfaces in Maya. Um, this property allows NURBS to represent exact conics such as um, parabolic curves, circles, and ellipses, um, in addition to freeform curves. So basically, when you're creating any object that has a lot of different curves, you will be creating a, a, a vase today. Um, using um, the NURBS curve tool, um, you'll see like how easy it is to basically use this um, tool to, do, to be able to do that. Um, and then to be able to turn that tool into a polygon shape. So um, that's pretty much it for my slides. And now I'm going to um, reshare my screen back to Maya. Great. Awesome. So this is my Maya scene that we're going to be creating today. You see that I've been playing around with like all these different um, shapes and stuff. Um, but yeah, we're going to be creating a rocket and then we're going to be creating a vase like this one. Um, so first things first, I'm just going to create a new scene. Um, just start from scratch. And I'm going to save this actually. Um, okay, but yeah, so once you open up Maya, this should be the um, blank scene that you see um, when you open it. And basically this middle part here is essentially um, your 3D creation space. So um, you can zoom into this space by using the scroll um, on your mouse. So this is me scrolling on my mouse. Um, in order to be basically like move around the scene, um, Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the Alt tab and the left clicker. And essentially that's going to allow me to move around the scene, right? So Alt tab, left click, moves me around my 3D scene. Alt tab, right click, lets me zoom in and out. So when I um, move in and out of the screen, that allows me to do that. 
And yeah, so that, that's basically how you navigate your scene. Um, basically by rotating around, zooming in and out, and just by scrolling also. So this here is my outliner. And this basically tells me everything that's placed in the scene. There's nothing there now. Um, so this is pretty much empty. Um, yeah, we just have like some cameras for our perspective, our top and our front and our side mode. And we can basically see that there on this tab. Um, basically, this is my perspective mode. This is my top mode, my front mode, and my side mode. Um, we won't really look much into this until we um, make our vase, but um, yeah, just so that you know, I'm gonna go back to my perspective mode. And yeah, um, these are just like so different selection tools that we can use. And here on my right side is our um, different attribute editors. So the first thing that I want everyone to do is um, make sure that um, we are on our, model our modeling tab here. Um, basically, these are all the tabs that are for like different um, that are that give you options for different things that you're trying to do in the Maya space. So let's say you're trying to rig characters, which means like putting bones into characters. You're going to be wanting to use the rigging tab. The animation tab is going to like uh, set you up with options that will make that easier. Um, the FX is just for visual effects, any type of like um, like explosions or like water imagery, like you would want to use that. Um, and then different re rendering tools. But we just want to make sure that we're staying on modeling. So in my modeling tab, um, I want to come down here and go to my poly modeling. And here I'm given a bunch of different options. So First things first, I'm just gonna like click on this sphere. And when you first see it um, within our scene, um, this is basically what we're given. And when we come here to our um, attributes uh, editor, um, which should be like in one of these different tabs, like we'll, we can go through all of these different tabs and see the different attributes. Oops. I messed that up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna just get out of there. Either way, um, we have a different, this down. We have different options for um, our attributes, our different, um, uh, descriptions for what this sphere is and how um, big it is, um, how we can change it um, in the space. So um, we can add new accesses. So now you see like this only has three, but before it had 20, we can add some more subdivisions so that it can become a little bit more complex if we're trying to change the model. And you can change the radius. So this is basically changing like how big the model is. So I think you have a question. Can we tune 3D modeling with mathematical equations? Yes, um, you can do that. Um, I don't necessarily think this, I don't think Maya would be the good, the perfect tool for it though. I think that if you want to um, use mathematical equations um, to create 3D models, um, Rhino would be a better um, software for that because um, in Rhino, you can basically just like put in different equations and um, it'll generate um, different 3D models for you. So yes, um, you can, just a different software would be better for that. So yeah, so basically um, like within here, like. Uh, I guess like the math would be changed to um, just like different sliders that you can change. Um, and that would be different sliders, different things that you can click on. Um, and that's basically like how you're changing and navigating the space. Great. So um, just our first little like warm up before we get started into like creating more models. Um, I am going to um, first teach you all the hotkeys on your computer, um, which are W, 
well, I'm going to make sure my sphere is um, selected. Um, but yes, W, move key, E, rotation, and R, um, which is the scaling tool. So with this moving tool, W, um, basically this allows you to move your sphere in the scene. With this um, E rotation tool, this allows you to rotate your model. And with this R, this also allows you to scale. So a little bit different than just like changing it, changing the spheres um, radius um, using the slider. Um, you're basically just doing it here. Great. Um, and also a lot of those different, um, you'll, you'll see here um, when you just click on P sphere one, that um, whenever I'm changing something, those attributes are changing here. And also if I change it there, like this is the X, so this is gonna change it there. The Y and then the Z coordinates. So yeah, so basically X, Y, and Z, when you change um, all of those different parameters, you do that. Um, and basically how I'm also um, scaling everything at once, I'm using this yellow um, square here. If I use just like one of these, like either like the red, the blue, or the um, top yellow, that's only also going to change the X, Y, or the Z um, portions as well. So yeah, so that's like pretty much the first thing. Um, the second thing we're going to do a lot of today is we are going to um, basically change a lot of the different surfaces um, on our different models. So what I can do to do that is I'm going to right click on my model. And when I right click, we're given this menu here, which gives us a lot of different options of things that we can do to um, change and um, basically navigate um, our objects. So if I click on face, if I right click and I'm still on the right click, I drag down to face mode. Now you can see all of my, um, my um, uh, object here, the lines all turn to blue. So um, basically you can click on a face here. And if I shift click, I can click on many faces. And yeah, you can start to model. Like if I pull it out, you can see that that changes um, the model. Um, and if I use those same tools, you, you can see like how the model changes based off of like what I'm trying to do. So yeah, I think that like for now, like let's all just like play around with our um, sphere. and just like make some different changes to it. It doesn't have to be perfect or pretty. Um, it's pretty much just showing like the different things that you can change. So that's the face tool. Um, let's say another thing that we're gonna be um, doing a lot today is um, with the vertex tool. So now that I um, did the right click, I scroll to vertex. Now all of the different verte vertices um, popped up. So if I click on one, now it's only going to change that point. So we can play around with like moving points around as well. Great. And then last but not least, um, the edge, edge tool. So this here, so, okay, a few things about the edge tool. When you click on one edge, um, you can apply everything that we've been doing just now. But another thing that we can do is um, when you double click on the edge, it uh, basically selects all of the edges around and that can allow you to change all of the edges at once. So that's the edge tool. And yeah, congratulations, you made your first 3D model um, with all of these different tools. So I'm gonna go back to the object mode and object mode, and I'm just gonna like drag this to the side um, 
And now let's get started on our rocket ship. So yeah, basically um, with like different beginner um, models, um, yeah, we're just gonna, you just like start out like small and then like you can see like how all of these tools are used and like how like robust like your projects can get uh, the more that you, the, the more that you use like all these different tools. Either way, um, I'm gonna start out with a sphere uh, polygon and I'm gonna come down to it and yeah, W key, move it, move it up. And now I'm going to change, um, I'm basically gonna make it longer for like the base of my rocket. So R and I'm gonna scale it up using this longer tool. Nice. Now we have our rocket shape. Nice. Next, um, uh, we're gonna get some of these cylinders. So I got one cylinder and I'm gonna move it up for the bottom of my rocket. I'm gonna do our tool. I'm gonna scale it down. Scale it up. And I'm just gonna scale it a little bit down. Great, and now I want to add some flares to the bottom of my rocket. So I'm going to right click, go to my edge mode, and then I'm just going to select all of these bottom. Whoop, wait, no, sorry, vertex mode. Just kidding. So I'm going to scroll, right click, vertex mode, select vertices. And then I'm going to flip it on to the other side just to check to see that check to see if it selected all of the vertices and not just the front ones. So I'm going to do my alt left mouse click, and you can see those weren't selected. So I can select these alongside the other vertices that I just selected by clicking the shift left click. So just by shift left clicking. Alt left click to rotate. Alt middle mouse click to drag. Shift left click, shift left click. Great. And now all of my vertices are selected at the bottom. So I'm going to go back to the front of this. And yeah, I'm just going to use the move tool. So move tool, R key. And I'm going to flare it out at the bottom. And you can see that it did it equally on all sides. Great. Nice. So now I'm going to go back to object mode. And I am going to duplicate this same object to create three flares. So to do that, I'm going to um, control C. And it's just going to say student version file. Just click continue and control V, continue. And you can see that it created um, another pasted cylinder here in my outliner. So you can see it has my spheres, my two spheres, my cylinders, and my next cylinder. And actually, I'm going to drag this down to like, oh. Can I put this down here? And yeah, I'm just going to drag that down. Then I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to drag, wait, I'm going to drag that down just a little bit more. Then I'm going to click on Control C, continue, Control V, continue, and scroll it down. Nice. Great. So now we have the base of our rocket. Good. See the position on the top of the left ladder. 
Um, yeah, so so it doesn't matter um, for this, but um, basically this um, this tab, when you group things, um, as you can see, like when I click the full group, um, the two um, cylinders that are within that group are selected um, when that group is selected. Um, but you also have the option, um, basically this is like um, parenting and, and creating parents and childs um to the models in the scene so right now i put this this um cylinder at the bottom as a child to this cylinder at the top so whenever i change um, different parameters of this top cylinder it'll affect the bottom um so let me just move this out of that group and into this group um so when I make this cylinder a child of the full group, basically that's creating um, the group as the parent. But if I um, move this down below, the below this cylinder, then that also creates that parent-child relationship there too. So it, re it basically just depends on what you're trying to do, what you're trying to model. Um, um, like, but it will make things easier for you if you use um, these options here um, in the outliner. I'm gonna delete that, we don't need that. Yeah, um, I'm gonna take this just to that group so that none of them are there, but they're all grouped by that. So yeah, so that is the first um, part of this. Second thing that we're gonna do is we are going to add um, two cylinders to the space here. And to do that, we're just going to add more. W key to move, E key to rotate. Yeah, we're just gonna add some windows and then I'm gonna alt left click drag. Also, we can use this um, transform attributes here, 90, make it perfect. And I'm just gonna do R key, nice. Nice, okay, great. And I'm gonna move it up closer, oopsie. Cool. Nice, and I'm just gonna place it on the inside. Great. So yeah, so we're creating these little windows here and to create a little bit of a deeper curve on the inside, we're just gonna add some more edges um, to this cylinder here. So I'm gonna come down to um, my attribute editor and I'm going to click on poly cylinder two. Once I click on poly cylinder two, we see that um, there's this subdivisions caps here. And I'm going to change this to four. And now you see all of these different edges were created. So I'm going to go, I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to my edge tab. I'm going to double click. Oops. on my edge, on one of the edges, so that it selects all of the edges. So I'll do that again, double click, all the edges are selected. Then I'm going to go to my move tool and, oops, control Z, sorry, control Z. <laughs> We're gonna move the edges out to the rim. So we wanna make sure that we're clicking on this middle move tool. We're moving it out to the middle of the room. Then we're gonna double click again. Move it out. Nice. And now we have a nice little edge here for the outer rim of this window. And we have an edge here that we can um, uh, basically move back 
So I'm going to go to the move tool, W key. I'm going to move to my scene so that I can see it better. I'm just going to move it in. Great. And there we go. Um, and now I'm going to add a smaller one um, right above that. So I'm going to go back to my object mode. Control C, continue, Control V, continue. Move up. And I'm just going to make this one smaller. Then we're going to do the rotate tool. Nice. Great. So there we go. So once we get to this part, um, I'm going to merge everything just so that it's one, um, uh, one model. So I'm just going to select, click everything, and you see everything becomes selected here. Then I'm going to go into Mesh, Booleans, and then click on Union. Oh, wait. Hold on. That didn't work for some reason. Control Z. Control Z. Wait. Oh, no. Sorry. Don't do that. Just click Control Z, Control Z. Um, just click on Combine. And um, yeah. Just combine it. For some reason, my mind is acting a little bit weird right now. But yeah, if you just select everything, go to mesh, click combine, it, it should combine all of your models together. And if you make any mistakes, just click on control Z and it'll like undo anything that you don't want to do. So yeah, now I have one model here, everything connected. Great. So next, um, I am going to add um, some fins to the sides of my model. And to do that, I am going to um, add a cube. And I'm just going to move it to the side. Um, R key to um, lengthen, thin it out. Okay, I think that's good. Now we are going to add some subdivisions to this um, here um, rectangle. So I'm going to go into polycube one and go to subdivisions with. And we're just going to add. Hey, why isn't that working right now? Oh, sorry. Subdivisions depth, there we go. Nice. You should have um, subdivisions along this axis. So I just put in 11. Great. And then once we do that, we are going to go up to the deform tab. So this tab here, I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to scroll down to nonlinear. And I'm going to click on flare. And now this cool, um, this cool change in the menu happened. So in my attribute editor, I'm going to go to flare one. And we're going to change these different parameters on the flare X. Oh, I think I know why this is like being weird. It's like changing on the wrong axis, my bad. Um, I put my project on the wrong axis, I think. 
yeah, it should be facing a different direction. Um, one second, let me just delete you for a second and let's put you in the front. So it's my Z. It's explaining a lot. Okay. Oh yeah. Um, just another note um, down here on your bottom, this is telling you like where you are in the scene. So as I move around, you see this little um, guy here sort of telling me which axis is like front facing and which is like side. So right now the Z is in front, this is the X and then the Y is straight forward up. So I'm just gonna put the Z in front. That's gonna be easy. And I'm gonna do this um, part again. which is why it didn't um, go along the x-axis. Nice. Cool. Polycube. There we go. Subdivisions with. I was, a, I was in the wrong axis. Nice. Okay. Deform. Flare. And now, basically, we want it to look more like um, the top um, coming in, and then the end of the flare, we want it to sort of come out. Oh wait, no, sorry, wrong flare. I don't want to touch the Z and flare. We want it like this. So basically, essentially we want our, um, we want our object to look like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the rotation tool. Um, we're going to basically use this inner rotation, not the outer, the inner. And we're gonna rotate our flare until we get the correct shape, which is that. So you wanna rotate it around this axis until you get a shape that looks like that. And I'm just gonna, yeah. Oh yeah, also to like, um, hide objects in your scene, um, you can just click on um, control H um, and yeah, to make them appear again, you just click on shift H. So I clicked on this object that I created before. Control H to hide, shift, shift H to have it appear again. Oops, there you go. Okay, either way. Um, I'm here now, and now I want to add a bend to this. So I'm going to go back to deform, nonlinear, bend, and this time, oops, I'm going to click on our object, and we're going to bend it. That's how we want. Oh, sorry. Actually, before we do that, we want to add curvature. My bad. So we're going to add a curve. Then we're going to rotate it down. Nice. Once we get it to a curve that you like, um, we're going to go to the move tool. And we are going to move this surface. Hold on. We're basically going to find the curve in a way where we can connect it back to our space. And then we're going to try to move it along this axis here. Ah. It may take a while to like 
get it correct. But yeah, you can play with these different attributes too. Try to get it to where it's supposed to be. Clear. Why is this like doing that? Hold on, let me do this again. We're gonna try to finish this a little quickly. I think maybe I didn't add enough subdivisions. Nice. Form clear. Okay. Okay. It's changing it around that. That's not what we want to do. Um, dang. My curve tool is being weird right now. Hold on, one more time. Let's see if that's like, since it's doing that, let's see what happens when we do the deform again, bend, oops. Bend. And then let's try to let's 
Yeah. Okay, my curve tool is acting really weird. Um, but basically, we want to use the curve tool to um, let me H if I change this. Okay. Almost there. Okay. Ah, okay. No. Let's do H, H, H. Okay, let's move that around, maybe. Let's move this around so that that is more there. Okay. This here. Okay, sort of. Uh, move it closer to here. Oh gosh, almost there. It's pretty long, um, but that's fine. Okay, just so that in the interest of time, I'm just gonna make this body bigger so that it sort of like can, oops, use this. Okay, there you go. So you see like you'll probably have to like do a lot of like finagling to sort of get it right, but I'm okay with this. Um, so yeah, so that I don't have to like, uh, do all of that work again. I'm just gonna like duplicate this one all around. So to do that, I am going to have this clicked. Going to go to the um I'm gonna go to the edit tab. We're going to go to duplicate special. Oh, but before we do this, actually, sorry, I'm skipping um, parts. First, we're going to click on our four key. This is our wireframe key. Um, we're going to click on our, we're going to re-click on our um, little pin here. Um, and basically, we're going to change the pivot. Um, and that's basically like where this sensor is. And to do that, we're going to press on our D key. Um, so now we have our um, rotation. And then we're going to basically move this to the center of the full object. So I'm going to click on, I'm going to press J, um, which basically snaps this to the grid. And I'm just going to move it to the center. Great. And it's important to do this part because um, basically this is going to allow us to have our fins um, all the way, um, going all the way around our object here. And um, yeah, that's like pretty important. This is actually still on a curve, but I'm not worried about that. It'll just be a really weird rocket. Um, anyway, once I do that, um, I can re-click on, on my five key to make all of my objects um, appear here. And then um, I'll go into the, um, I'll go back to the edit tab. Um, duplicate special, but I'm going to click on this little box here. Um, and then basically, we're going to click on, we're going to make three copies of this. 
And we're going to make this an instance. So we're going to make sure that we're clicking on instance here. Group under parent, three copies, and duplicate special. And now all of my weird fins are now all around. And basically, when I go back here and I change any of the attributes um, of either like the curve or the flare, basically, you can just keep going and just like keep changing um, anything that it is that you want to change with that. So yeah, so that's that's how you um, model the rocket. And in the interest of time, um, I just wanted to do the vase really quickly with you all. Um, so first things first, um, I'm going to go, I'm going to stop my share real quick. And I'm going to reshare my screen to my presentation, exit out. And I'm going to go to um, my Google. And basically, we are going to look for an image reference. And we want something that's going to be direct onto the vase. So this is a really good picture here um, of something that is really direct um, onto the vase. We don't want anything at an angle like this, um, because that's going to basically like not help us. Um, but something like this would be great. So I'm going to just like save this image as um, a vase 2 onto my desktop. And then I'm going to go in back into Maya. And basically, I'm just going to first combine all of this together. Y'all can keep playing with that. Mesh combine. We're going to move that to the side. Um, then we're going to hide this, Control H. And then um, basically, I'm going to come into um, this I'm going to go to my left tab, my furthest left tab here. I'm going to click on these three panels. And basically, I want to go into my front tab here. So I'm just going to make this bigger so that this is the only thing that I see. So um, here, we're going to put our image resource. And I'm going to do that by clicking on the View tab here. Make sure that I'm in my front view. And I'm going to go down to image plane, import image. And I'm going to go to my vase too. So this is my vase. And now you see my vase is in the scene. Great. So now basically we're going to use this picture um, to allow us to make a vase um, actually. So to do that, we're going to create a nerves curve. So basically, I'm going to go up into my Create tab at the top, Curve Tools, CV Curve Tool. And I'm going to start at the bottom. So I'll drag, zoom in. And I'm going to get, I'm going to click on the grid first. And basically, I'm just going to go around the vase. Oops. Only one side. So this is the outer. Oh, sorry. My bad. Um, let me go. Let me stop the share. And then share the screen again to my Maya. Let me do that whole thing again. Sorry. Let me just, uh, I'm going to delete this. And then I'm also going to just delete that too. Delete the curve. Sorry. Let me do this from the top. So basically, we were in our perspective mode. I'm going to go to my um, different tabs. I want to basically focus on this front tab. So I'm just going to move the other panels out of the way. And then I'm going to click on view here within my front tab, image plane, import image, VAS2. Then my VAS comes up. Great. And now I'm going to create um, a curve pattern around this VAS. 
So I'm going to go into my create tab at the top of my screen. Curve tools and then CV curl curve tool. So I'm going to scroll down. And then basically I'm just going to left click around this image of my vase. And it's going to help help direct me to know where to place. The next portion. Sorry, I'm just going to do this pretty quickly. And now I'm going to just do the inside of the vase as well. And I'm going to zoom in and make sure that they're both aligned um, with this grid here. Great. And then once I'm finished with um, basically the outline for my vase, just half of it, I'm just going to click on Enter. And now my line is green. Um, I can go back into uh, perspective mode. And I can go into my outliner and just delete my image plane because we don't need it anymore. And now you see I have this curve here. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn this curve into the full vase. Um, and so to do that, we are going to go to our surfaces tab. And we are just going to click on this revolve here. And now we have our vase. And you can see that that was basically developed from this curve here. So the last thing I want to do here with this vase is I want to turn this from NURBS geometry into polygon geometry so that we can do um, more stuff with it. So in order to do that, uh, what we're going to want to do is we are going to go to the modify tab at the top. Then we're going to go scroll down to the convert. Then there's this nerves to polygons tab here. We're just going to click on that. Right? We want to make sure that it's not on triangles. We're going to change it to quads. And then everything else should be great. And then we're just going to click on apply. So now there's this vase that's created on top of our other vase. But this one's a polygon. This one's a nerves. Um, a nerves um, revolve surface. So yeah, so that's pretty much that. Um, we don't have much time. Do the, um, yeah, we don't have like much time to do anything else, but really quick, I just wanted to show you maybe some materials. Um, so let's say I want to add like maybe like some colors to this vase and also to my nice spaceship here. Um, I'll just show you real quickly sort of how we can go through that process. So basically what I'm going to do here is if I come up to my rendering tab um, within my modeling and I just click on this little um, create material. Now you see that it's sort of changed. We can change the color here. Um, and we can also change the type of material it is. So that's a blend. But they also have like other things that you can change it to. And from there, you see like, you know, Lambert makes it less shiny. Go back to there. You can change the transparency. So now you can see like inside of the um, vase. And yeah, you can play with all of these different, like how light bounces off of your um, piece here. And yeah, you can, you can play with all of these different parameters to sort of see like how it changes your your material. And yeah, up here, um, I'm going to uh, click on this lighting tab because just the last thing I wanted to show you was like 
how to add lighting to your scene. So right now there's no lights in my scene, so everything's black. Um, but if I click on this directional light here and then I move it forward, um, basically this is like adding a white source, like an overhead light source to your scene. Um, and when you, um, you can see like it doesn't, it's not lighting from the back because um, all of these little arrows here are pointing this direction. But if I change this direction, you see the lighting's changing in my scene. Great. And last thing, last thing before we all go. Um, this is, uh, we, we, if you want to add like an HDR map to your scene, and basically this is going to allow um, the, the picture to allow lighting into your scene. Um, basically, you can just Google HDR eye maps, and um, this is just like one of the resources that I found. And you can download one of these images. So let's say I want to download this one. It's going to scroll down. And now this is here. I'm going to wait for that to install. Um, if I go into my Arnold's tab and um, I go into this sort of sky sphere, it's like this uh, sort of spherical looking shape here with uh, the grid. Click on that. Basically, we're going to add our picture, our HDR map. You see, like, the lighting change. And um, I'm just going to add in, I'm going to double click on this checker piece here. Then I'm going to click on File. So now it turns into this Lambert. I'm going to click on this folder here. And I'm going to go to my downloads folder where it um, downloaded. HDR. And this is just going to take a while because, like, for whatever reason, my computer doesn't like to load it. But yeah, um, after like a few seconds, um, it should load and you can have a really cool background. So, yeah. Um, are there any questions on like that additional stuff? Um, yeah, I think that. Maya is a really great tool to like start um, working with um, a lot of different um, a lot of different industries like use Maya and um, yeah I think it's like a really great like first tool to use um, especially um, if you're just learning um, 3D modeling why didn't this load I think it's mad at me just have to wait. For a second. I know sometimes it. Oh, wait, sorry. I think that it didn't, um, it probably didn't share on my, this here. But yeah, this is where I got the HDR map. And yeah. And I'm basically like installing that into here. And I'm gonna stop share. And then I'm gonna share my Maya. Ah, uh, sorry, my application's not responding. Yay, there, yeah. So I uploaded that model into here. And now this model is lighting scene and Maya is mad at me. So it doesn't want to move, but it loaded. And now you can see that it's affecting the lighting to the materials. So yeah, I think that's like all I'm gonna go over today. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, are there any more questions or comments? Um, about anything? Yeah. Um, thank you all for coming. I'm going to um, send out, um, I'm going to see if I can send out the slides, but um, also we're going to see if we can send out the recording as well. 
So if there's anything that you missed, um, yeah, like basically we'll be sending some resources out for y'all to um, work with. Yeah, thanks for coming. I hope this was helpful. Um, as you can see, like there's so many different possibilities with Maya. Um, you can just make and create so, like so many different objects and you can um, insert those objects also into other different programs as well. Um, for me, I do a mix of like modeling, but then I also mix a lot of the work that I do in Maya with um, gaming engines. So I work a lot with like either Unity or Unreal. So like importing the polygons and the different objects that I created in Maya into um, um, Unreal or Unity, like that's something that's like really possible too. So yeah, um, I guess that's it. If there are any questions, um, just like you can all just like even email me or whatever. Um, yeah, thank you all for coming. Bye.